those two main kings king Saul who was the first king and the scripture indicates to us he was chosen by people and the king after him was the king David who was chosen by God and king Saul he was a taker even when the description was written about his kingdom it will say he will take your daughters he will take your possessions he will take your lands he will take your taxes he will take but David from the beginning to the end of his life we saw always David gave he gave his life to try and rescue the sheep to try and rescue Goliath and to try and rescue people from the Goliath and continued on to risk his life to protect the people of God and we see that King Saul he was disobedient to God and in the beginning God causes him to lose a dynasty that means that even when King Saul would finish his reign his after him none of the people with Saul's name will be able to occupy the throne and then Saul continues to disobey and God says not only you're losing your dynasty I'm gonna dethrone you and he actually was dethroned for not executing God's judgment on Amalekites and God came through Samuel and says you're no longer a king yet King Saul still continued to rule as though he was a king. God removed kingdom from him yet he still exercised authority, he still intimidated people and people were still afraid and people were still under his jurisdiction. As this was going on that King Saul who was no longer king though he was controlling people on the other side there was a young man named David who was legitimate king but he didn't have a throne and he developed a little huddle a little group that combined themselves with David and they said we will be with him and they lived in exile they were persecuted they were in hardships and eventually King David who had no throne got the throne and Saul experienced his last defeat where he and those who were with him not only lost the dynasty, lost the crown, but they lost their lives. That's exactly what's happening right now. Kingdom of Satan is like the kingdom of Saul. He was with God, but he was disobedient. And God threw him away from heaven. Defeat number one. And then God didn't give him an option of repentance. Sometimes we don't think of that. That with us, when we sin, God gives us an option. Chance number two. And most of us, we used up chances 20,000. Satan didn't have an option. That means he has no dynasty. He has no future reconciliation with God. God says, you're done. Then God sent his son on the cross and Jesus disarms Satan not only in heaven Satan was defeated he was defeated on earth so now Satan roams around the earth without a crown though he still rules and though he still has quote unquote majority under his spell just like Saul who terrorized people lied to people about David saying David is a bad guy and kept people under his regime, threatened people. People in their hearts wanted the King David. They loved David because he was for them. But under the oppression of Saul, they served him a king without a crown. And that's exactly what's happening today. Majority of the world today are under the spell. And the Bible says under the sway of the evil one. In their hearts, people believe there is a God in their hearts there is a yearning to be with someone who created you but because of this oppression and because satan pretends to be a king and he's no longer is the bible says that he is the prince of the air but we know that jesus christ before he left heaven he said all the authority is mine that means satan has been fired he's running like a chicken without a head he's still controlling the earth He's still keeping it under his terror, but he has been defeated. Now, what I want to present to us today is also I want to remind you of Satan's future. Why? Because Satan will remind you of your past and you have to be sure of his future. 
you have to remind him why because see Satan will remind you of your past and your past is a fact so is his future he will say you did it you're like that's right and guess what's gonna happen to you wait until your future comes your future is nothing compared to my past The Bible says that the kingdom of God will be preached and then the end will come. When I was younger that word scared me because what that meant to me as a young person is that there comes a time a last person gets saved and then we all gonna get shot by the devil and the devil's gonna like torment and hurt us and everything. But if you read book of Revelation you see that the end doesn't come for us. The end comes for the devil God doesn't let the devil go to hell without first bringing hell on the devil. Everything about book of Revelation you see the first it starts with seals. Then goes to trumpets and then goes to bowls. And that's those verses in the Bible you see the horses, you see the earth being turned down and you always see this at the end of every single wrath of God. Is that God was aiming all of his wrath on Satan not in hell on earth because God will do to Satan what happened to Saul he will experience his final defeat on this earth Satan's kingdom is popular but not going to be popular very long even when Saul was popular inside he was terrorized the Bible says inside Saul during his last battle he went to a witch doctor and he was scared for his life and the Bible tells us that Satan also is scared knowing his time is short. Though he has everything under his fingertips inside he knows God is right and he is like a race car racing really fast to a cliff. His kingdom no matter how popular it is is going to be doomed.